the media has done a really good job at scaring us to death when we hear the word fentanyl. One of the things that we want to make really clear and just bust today is that you cannot overdose by touching fentanyl. And this has been proven. There's statements out from uh, the American Medical Association just disclosing that it's not a thing. It doesn't happen. Although the myth persists, there was a traffic stop in the United States at the onset of the overdose crisis when the deaths were really increasing. An officer pulled a vehicle over and found some powders which uh, he made the assumption was probably or could have been fentanyl. And he found that some of it somehow got on his uniform. And when he went to brush it off, he felt like he was having or experiencing an overdose. That's, that's how he recounted it. And the media picked up on this story. It went viral, it got in all the major outlets. And pretty soon everyone's saying, police officer touches fentanyl and overdoses. And so this myth has, has gone far and wide. People still think it, they still believe it. It's really a dangerous myth because it can prevent people from being willing to respond to an overdose. And that's the biggest problem here is that people are afraid that if they respond to an overdose, maybe they will overdose just by touching this person. And it's not something you need to be afraid of. It's not something that we need to have any concerns about. It's not something that can happen. That officer in the States who, who touched the powder and thought he uh, was experiencing an overdose, he was later drug tested and uh, they found that there was no, no opioids, no drugs in his system, that he had actually probably just experienced a panic attack and that the naloxone that was administered really just served as a placebo and uh, mitigated what the, the anxiety that he was experiencing. The pharmaceutical company that had developed fentanyl patches, which is another thing where people start to believe that you know fentanyl can be delivered through the skin is because there is such a thing as a fentanyl patch which delivers the medication through the skin. But that patch took millions in research and development to develop. It was a complicated process to get the science right in order to actually deliver the drug through the skin. And the fentanyl that is available in the illicit drug market on the street in powders and pills is not fentanyl in a patch form. It doesn't deliver uh, in that way. So coming into contact with fentanyl, touching it, having it land on your skin, or touching a person that's experiencing an overdose is not gonna cause an overdose in you. There's actually no documented cases of cannabis uh, contaminated with fentanyl. It's never been found. When drugs are seized by the RCMP in Canada, they're always analyzed, and RCMP have never analyzed cannabis that had fentanyl in it. It's a myth that is perpetuated, I believe, because of stigma, still. At the scene of an overdose, first responders, paramedics, firefighters attend, and they want to get the story of what happened. They're trying to interact with the people who are there. They're trying to save the life of the individual that's overdosed. And the story that's often presented is, we just we were just smoking weed. We were just smoking some weed. He must have got some bad weed. It must have some fentanyl in it. We don't know what happened. And that story is easier to sell than the truth because of the stigma we have around substances. We feel much more comfortable in our society talking about marijuana, talking about cannabis and, and admitting to its use. It's actually legal now in Canada, so we're comfortable to tell uh, a police officer that we were using cannabis. We're not comfortable telling the police officer we were using other illegal drugs. And so it's not surprising to me that this myth persists because stigma keeps uh, people from telling the truth. Fentanyl has a very low vaporization temperature. That is, uh, it burns at generally less than 500 degrees. So even if it was sprinkled into a joint or sprinkled on top of cannabis, uh, it would burn up, it would actually be destroyed before it could produce a psychoactive effect because the temperature of a, a marijuana joint burns a lot higher than the vaporization temperature of fentanyl. So this is not something we need to be in fear of. It's not something that's happening. There is no cannabis uh, that's been laced with or contaminated with fentanyl, and we can just put that one to rest. So one perception of the overdose crisis is that it's only affecting people who are intentionally seeking opioids. And I just wanna say that that's completely untrue. Because of the potency uh, of fentanyl in the drug supply, it's contaminated all drugs. Powders, pills, liquids, fake oxy, pills that you purchase on the street, cocaine, stimulants, crystal meth, MDMA, ketamine, 
all these drugs have been found contaminated with fentanyl at some point. And there's a fantastic example of this from the Shambhala Music Festival. A uh, great organization called Anchors provided free, safe drug testing for people that attended the festival. Police not involved, they just said if you have substances and you want to find out what's in them, bring them, we will analyze them and we will provide you with the results. Those results were published online, you can look them up, and they're astonishing. It shows a cross-section of what's really going on with the drug supply. So fentanyl is a synthetic opioid that is massively cost-effective in terms of its entry into the drug supply. It's easy to manufacture, it's super profitable for suppliers. We're talking about a million dollars plus per kilogram of that drug. It's potent, 40 times stronger than heroin, so smaller amounts are needed to uh, produce the same effect. As a result, suppliers realized that they can put fentanyl uh, to replace, essentially replace the heroin supply, replace the supply of opioids on the street. And that's what uh, fentanyl was originally intended to do. But because of its potency, what we are seeing in the drug supply is cross-contamination. So one of the myths people believe is that fentanyl is intentionally being laced into cocaine or other drugs. And generally what we are understanding is that it's not intentionally being placed in there, it's a, con it's a contamination problem. Fentanyl is so potent that in these clandestine kitchens or labs that people are preparing these substances, uh, they may be preparing a batch of fentanyl for the day, then they move on to their batch of cocaine and literally trace amounts of fentanyl make their way into that supply. And people that are opiate naive, maybe they don't use opioids ever, they are seeking a stimulant drug like cocaine, they may get that particular dose that has what we would call a hot spot. It's got a little bit of fentanyl in it and that's all it takes. So we're not talking about intentional lacing of the drug supply, we're talking about fentanyl replacing heroin and cross-contamination impacting other drugs. The drug supply is not what people think it is, and the risk of fentanyl being in your drugs today is higher than ever. We want people to know this so they can be wise, they can be safe, they can use with a buddy, they can always use uh, more, but you can't use less. So start slow and be aware. Naloxone's been rolled out as a harm reduction measure in mitigating the overdose crisis. It's saved tens of thousands of lives just in the province alone. One perception, one myth people do still seem to believe is that naloxone can harm people. You could give me naloxone right now, it won't hurt me. So naloxone only does one thing, and that is reverse the impact of opioids on brain receptors. So it's totally safe to administer. It's not something anyone has to have any fear about, and it's doing a fabulous job at mitigating the overdose crisis. If you want to learn how to use a naloxone kit, you can check out the video on our page. For more in-depth training, TowardTheHeart.com has everything you need to know. Naloxone kits are free. They're easy to get. Your pharmacy down the road will have one for you. So you can play a role. You can save a life.